I'm filming indoors at the moment because it's like a hurricane outside. It is absolutely ridiculously windy. And I wanted to talk to you today about hand pollination. Hi, I'm Robin. Welcome to Robin's Container Garden. As you can tell, I'm doing this one-handed inside because the wind is absolutely horrible out there today. Um, but I wanted to talk to you today about hand pollinating uh, some of your vegetables. I'm going to show you how I'm going to hand pollinate the uh, a courgette that I have outside. I have a striato Talia, I'm, I wreck that every time I say it, so I'm just I'm just kind of accepting that I'm not pronouncing that properly. It is a striped courgette or zucchini if you're in the states. So um, the uh, there's a male flower that's open and uh, a female flower on a fruit that is about to open, but it's not open yet. So I'm worried about that pollinating and I don't want that fruit to die because I'm really desperate to try that one. So I'm gonna cheat and I'm going to, um, I'm gonna hand pollinate that one. So I've done the first part today and what I'll do is um, the second part where I'm actually pollinating the female flower when it opens. I'll film that as well so you'll see the whole process from the beginning to the end and at some point in a later video I'll show you uh, a little bit more uh, hopefully if it works <laughs> that that particular plant or uh, that that particular fruit has actually done what it needed to do we should know just in a few days after the fruit opens we should know within three or four days whether that's going to take or not. So, um, and it may actually get pollinated by the bees. We don't know. I'll just wait and see. But if it does pollinate and it does grow, I'm definitely going to take 100% credit for that. <laughs> you know. Um, but I'm also going to show you how I pollinate the tomato plants. There's several different ways to do that hand pollination. And you don't necessarily have to do it, but I do it anyway just to be sure that we get uh, plenty of tomatoes. I did it last year and we had loads of tomatoes um, from just two plants and I've got 11 this year so I'll, you know it increased just a tiny tiny bit right <laughs> um, but I'm gonna show you how to hand pollinate plants if you have a greenhouse and and it's uh, it's not getting a lot of pollinators inside or if you have your plants in an area where there's not a lot of flowers you may not get as many pollinators and so some of your flowers may not develop into tomatoes. So this is a way to guarantee that that happens. And I'm also going to show you how I'm trying to pollinate, hand pollinate the corn. Um, I don't know if you follow my Instagram, you will have seen that our corn pollen stalks or whatever they're called, tassels or whatever, got uh, just annihilated by birds. So... Um, that really kind of, it, it broke my heart, to be honest, because I was really looking forward to having some corn from our corn plants. This is the first time I've grown corn, so uh, seeing that, I just panicked, and I got really upset, and one of my Instagram followers, uh, God love her, she, uh, she told me that, you know, if you find any more, cover them up and protect them from the birds, and then you're going to have to hand pollinate. So I had to look into that, see how to do that, and I don't have enough of them to do what I've read to do, is to take, uh, just take one of the stalks and just kind of shake it over everything. And I've only got two ears of corn with silk at the moment anyway. So um, what I've decided to do is to uh, take off bits, just little pieces of the pods, but I'll show you that in the video, and it's all going to be there. And I just wanted to uh, kind of go through that because you may need to do some hand pollination yourself. And if you don't have to do it now, you may want to have that information kind of in your pocket for another time. If you do need hand pollination. So um, let's kind of, let's just get to it. This is the corn. So now we have two uh, ears that have the silk out. And because 
of the situation we had with the birds eating the tassels that have the pollen on them. And I'm going to keep apologizing for this blinking wind. I can't seem to get away from it. It has been really bad the last couple of days. Um, I'm hand pollinating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in and I'm going to grab, I'm just going to grab one so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so this is the stalk. This is one of the stalks. I've got another one over here, but this is one of the stalks that did not get damaged by the birds, thank goodness. And this is where the pollen lives. The pollen lives in these little pods. And what I do, and this is what I've done for the last couple of days, is that I take the, pol the little pod and then I rub it back and forth over the it's probably not working because of the stupid wind, but I'm rubbing it back and forth over the top of the silk, hoping that some of that is going to take. Um, I'll do another one, just so you can see what I'm doing. I'll do it on the other. I'll have to come out here later when the wind isn't so bad, but I wanted to film this real quick. So, so here's my here's my little pods. Oops. Here's my little pods, and I want to take them on the opposite end of where they were connected to the, the tassel. See, ah, oh, Jesus, stupid. This here, focus, focus, there. That bit right there was connected to the tassel. So I'm going to turn that around, and I want to put that on the top. And this is the, bar, this is the part that's going to open. So what I'm going to do, it's really awkward to film this and do this one-handed, so bear with me. I'm going to rub that together here, just like that. And I can actually feel the pollen coming out. I can't see it because it's so fine. There goes the pod. But that's coming out on top, and can you see? Stupid wind. Can you see the little bit there on the water? There's some pollen there, and gosh, I hate this wind so much. If we make it, because of the wind on these, it's going to be because they're just stubborn, and they're going to survive regardless. So, fingers crossed. Obviously, you have to do a little bit more than that, um, but that's just an example of how to hand pollinate because I've got such a such a little amount of the pollen stalks, the little tassels, and I've only got two ears right now that have come out with their with their silk. There may be another one or two that pop out, but it's only going to be on these plants. I'm not expecting any ears to come out on these plants at all. These are the smaller ones, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But that's how. I've been pollinating the corn, and we're going to wait and see if that actually does the trick. I'm going to show you what I do to pollinate the tomato plants. Now, we've had enough wind here for it to actually happen naturally, but it because the male, sorry, this is, I've pretty much like had it with the wind this year. Um, the male and female parts of the, f of the flower are in the same flower here. Some people will use an electric toothbrush, some people will use a paintbrush, but I just tap it. I'll just kind of shake it like that. That's all I do. And like I said, we've had enough wind here to pollinate things for years. <laughs> um, so it it's either the wind or because of all of these lovely marigolds that we've got some pollinators back here or my coming out and tapping that we have tomatoes you can see this is a legend you can see two of the tomatoes here so um, it is working I do have tomatoes on all of the plants and I've got flowers on all of the plants but as I said it could be the wind, it could be my tapping, it could be the bees, it could be a combination of all of these. But that's how I 
hand pollinate tomatoes. What we've got here is the Striato d'Italia. And as you can see, we have had some, we've had some movement. It's kind of hard to see with this big leaf in the way. We've got a male flower open and we've got a couple of females. Because I'm putting this down on here, you're gonna figure out what I'm doing. Uh, we've got a couple of female, got a couple of fruits here and here. This one's just about to open. It may open later today, but, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these cotton buds and I'm going to try to save some pollen. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna rub some of this off, hopefully. Yeah, I think that's come off. Yep, there's some there and you didn't get to see that because I didn't have the thing pointed right. So I'll try it again. Okay, so we've got this and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna rub around to get some pollen. Can see it's on there yeah. and I'm putting it in this jar and I'm gonna keep that until tomorrow and ah, and I'm gonna see if this female flower opens so those are in there safely if this female flower opens it'll be fine but if the female flower does not open because can't really see because I've got it out of focus here. This is the female flower from the bigger fruit and that's the male flower down here. And then we've got another fruit here with a female flower. Now that one won't open for a few days but this one may open today. It may open tomorrow morning and if that's gone over by then then it won't get pollinated. So I'm gonna try to see if I can't do it myself. My husband says, oh, now you're cultivating. <laughs> and he's right. I am. I'm determined to get this. Now. I mean, there's tons of flowers and fruit on here. Look. There's, I'm going to put this down here. There's fruit here. There, you saw that fruit. There's another fruit coming down here. And there's tons of little male flowers all over this plant. There's tons of them everywhere. So, I think it'll be fine. But I'm just hedging my bets here. Just just trying to assure everything's gonna be okay. So we'll wait and see and figure out what happens. As I had suspected, the courgette, the male flower, flowered last night or yesterday. And the female flower is, ooh, good morning, um, is wide open this morning. So um, he missed it. And so I'm gonna take my little pollen uh, cotton buds and I'm going to pollinate the female flower. So I'll show you what to do here. So first of all, behold this glorious flower. Isn't that just stunning? It still has dew on it, look. It still has dew on it from this morning. Okay, and so where's that male flower? We'll find it, we'll find it. Oh, I think, sorry about that, I'm using my phone, so here we go. There he is, all shriveled up, so he missed it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little cotton buds that have the pollen on them. Well, first I'm gonna, I think I'm going to put them up here so I can get it good grip on them. Now, you can see the yellow hall in there, yeah? And the female flower here, this bit, the stamen, is really sticky, so it should actually take all the pollen. Oh, look at that. It's taking the pollen. So that's a clean cotton bud. There's nothing left. Okay, so I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to pick that up. I say I'm going to pick that up. I can't actually reach it. Uh, 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There. So you can see the pollen. Put it in the light so you can really see it. Oh, except it's not focusing. There we go. See all that pollen on there? And all that pollen is going to stick to the female parts of the flower here. That's amazing. Yep. Uh, sunshine. No pollen. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually turn the camera off for a second because I'm going to go on the inside of that jar and see if there's any loose pollen left and put that on the flower as well. So I'll be right back. Okay, there was a bit of pollen left inside the jar. So I've picked that up and I'm going to put that on here too. I don't know how much it needs. Um, I just took as much as I could, hoping that some of it would be left over for the... Um, for the flower if it opened um but there's a little bit left on here but it's not coming off but that's fine we've got some pollination anyway and that was the point and now this gorgeous courgette should actually develop as normal so um in a few days we should know for sure because if it's not been pollinated, when that flower falls off, the, the fruit will die and it won't grow anymore. It won't get any bigger than this and it will start to kind of collapse and it'll get brown and it'll just die. So with it, fingers crossed, that, that little trick worked. We've got a couple more here and here and there's loads of male flowers on this plant there's not as many on that ambassador over there but um, we'll just have to wait and see if, if it works and uh, I'll check back in and let you know so I really hope that you got something out of that something that you'll be able to use yourself or uh, maybe use in the future um, and it may just be a situation where you kind of have, like I said, have that in your pocket and, and be able to use it if you definitely need it. Or just to ensure that your plants are getting pollinated the way that they need to be. You can do the same thing that I did with the courgettes. You can do that with your cucumbers if you need to, if you feel like they're not getting pollinated properly uh, and things like that. So, you know, there's, there's a, a variety of different ways that you can use that for different plants depending on whether you've got male and female parts to a plant or if it's got its male and female parts uh, in the flowers together at the time. So I hope it's useful for you. And uh, until next time, stay safe, take care. Bye, y'all.